Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 567th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wesh A for the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we have Jordo from Minnesota. He's the founder of Drop Funnels. So, um, really good guy, really good program. So, I immediately had him back on the CRM Sushi Podcast to demo that software. So, you're in for a treat with that. Uh, So, stay tuned. That'll come out within a few days of this episode going live. Uh, but, um, great guy with, um, a very familiar story, right? He was using tools. Uh, they weren't cutting the mustard and rather than bitch and complain, he went out and developed the tool that he wished he had. And, um, so we talk about that, his, his iteration process, uh, his growth, his journey, um, and how he launched it and how it's scaling now. So you are in for a treat. Um, if you could see my office right now, you could see me smiling, invested a little money, got a new standing desk, upgraded my microphone arm, got a new pop filter, got dual brackets for mounting brackets for my monitor and it doesn't quite work on the iMac, but the iMac's a little old, maybe upgrading that, maybe going the old Mac mini, a supercharged M1 Mac mini talking to my buddy my dealer um so a lot of cool stuff you know it's time right every now and then you gotta invest in yourself and i've been telling people this for 197 years roughly um we're in crazy times uncertain times so the best investment you can do is invest in yourself oh yeah i got this cool light oh what's it from loom cube it's a LED, shoots at me, I can bend it down, it's got a USB port, USB-C, uh, all kind of cool stuff. Getting new bookshelves, rearrange the office, probably going to get a new chair, a new leather chair, because I sit a lot in the old leather chair on my laptop. But anyway, um, invest in yourself, okay? Um, I'm creating some new, new logos for uh, all of my programs. Uh, getting some new marketing material. You're going to be seeing me sport some new t-shirts because I'm looking around. And I'm like, why am I wearing other people's stuff? Like my jujitsu is cool, but I don't get paid to do jujitsu. Why don't I wear the gorillas of growth, the CRM sushi podcast t-shirts, the sales podcast t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm working on. Getting some new logos, uh, spruced up some cool t-shirts. I'm not sure if you're interested in those. If you are, hit me up. I uh, will get you a deal on those you have always had hats and uh, other material some 50 caliber bullets uh, say market like a man those are cool those are for sale by the way and my challenge coins everything has a price okay so hit me up if you're interested Um, but do invest in yourself okay It, it was so funny you know my son came over and you know, sitting there talking. It's like, why do we tolerate stuff? Why do we put up with stuff? Like, cause my office was fine. My setup was fine. It was functional. I got stuff done, but it's like, why not make it better? Why not make it as close to ideal as I can? Right. And, and sometimes money may be tight. You can't do everything you want, but be comfortable. Make sure you're productive. The work that you do is effective. Okay. Um, so invest in yourself. As I talk about these programs, you know, make every sale, sell more of everything. Um, I'm going to be tightening things up, bringing in. I think I'm going to launch the Gorillas of Growth. Stay tuned. I did that um, a little over a year ago for a, a SaaS client. I did some consulting for, and I just made that name up right before we launched. But that was a, um, a six-week course. Um, but I've got all the materials. And... Um, and maybe become an official program. I think I like it. I've, I've asked a few folks, got their opinion. They like it. So, hey, even if they didn't, I'd probably still do it. But it does help to get people's feedback that you know, like, and trust. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned for that. Um, but for now, you know, Make Every Sale is still it's on demand. Go get it, makeeverysale.com. And if you want to interact with us um, every Monday, uh, I did raise the price on that and I changed it from month to month to quarterly. So you're going to join us for at least one quarter, uh, or you can really save a lot and join for a year. Okay. Sell more of everything.com invest in yourself. You'll be glad you did. Now let's bring on Jordo.
Jordo, founder of dropfunnels.com, all the way from almost Minneapolis, St. Paul. But you're on the good side, right? You're on the Wisconsin side? We, we like to say it's the good side, yeah, we're, but we're biased. There you go. Welcome to the sales podcast, man. How the heck are you? I'm glad to be here. Glad to you know, hopefully give a lot of insights to anyone who can, you know, who decides to, to hear through this. And I'm sure we're going to have a blast. We're friends already, so. We're going to get into your story here, but Drop Funnels, the elite marketer's choice. Oh yeah. What makes you elite, man? Huh? Is there, does your Congressman give you a certificate? Are you like certified elite? It's that's the power of copywriting, isn't it? Right. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, as, as a platform for context, uh, you know, we're going to talk about, I'm sure a lot of cool things, but you know, drop funnels is an all in one platform. You can build sales funnels, websites, blogs, sales pipelines, um, all your courses and whatnot that would rival many other programs. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs are building a lot of platforms and they're duct taping it all together. So instead, Drop Funnels came as a solution to say, okay, delete all those. You can do it all in one spot and it can load faster than almost, almost any other platform so that your conversions are, are at the highest that they can be. And it can rank in Google because it's built on, uh, on, on what we call WordPress AI. So WordPress is the number one ranking factor in, in Google. So your sales funnels can actually rank in Google for free organic traffic. So for us, we're a much smaller and much more intimate uh, kind of company with our, with our customers. And we, we work with them much more closely. And we've gotten some, some pretty cool high-level marketers you know, on board and they've seen the difference. So that's, uh, that's how that tagline came to be. Uh, so I do want to get into that, but what... What's up with WordPress, man? I hear some guys poo-pooing it. Um, I've worked with it for many, many years, and I haven't worked with it in several years. I, I built my website now. I moved it from WordPress to HubSpot many years ago. But that was a, a personal slash financial decision, right? I was able, I got on early before they raised the prices, and I could have almost unlimited domains on their platform for one flat price and 24 seven live phone support. I mean, it just, it made economic mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. and I'm a reseller of platforms. So, uh, but I do love its speed and, and security. Uh, and personally, I like not having to tinker with hosting and CDN and SSL and VAs, uh, plugins, you know, you log in one day and your website's exactly. totally white. Like, yep. Hmm, yeah, I right. didn't build a totally white on white website. Maybe yeah, I should do yeah. some troubleshooting. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, you have 497 plugins. One of them is conflicting. And like, oh, which one? Uh, I'm like, no, Nightmare. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> but obviously, WordPress is a behemoth. So, and honestly, I haven't heard of WordPress AI. That's how much I've been away from WordPress. So what the heck is that? So yeah, for, for context, WordPress powers, uh, I think the stat has been updated, but it powers about 34% of the entire internet. We're saying right. the entirety of the internet are built on WordPress-based sites. And the, the beauty in that is that it's so friendly with Google's algorithm. It helps you to rank. Y your data is your data. It's, your, it's private. No one's there selling to your customers, which unfortunately happens on, uh, on other platforms is that they're actually taking your customers and selling to them. Um, and it's within their terms to do so. And so I, I think for, for both privacy, speed, flexibility to do anything that you want, WordPress is really the, the, the linchpin. But it's very technical, as you mentioned, you have to have hosts, you have to have a good server, you need plugins, you need themes, you have to maybe hire a developer and have VAs just to manage it. And if you update one little thing, one plugin, the whole thing crashes down and, and tumbles. So I, I was doing that for years and it would take me, you know, three to six months to get a business off the ground. And most of it was spent in tech headache hell, so to speak. It was just not, uh, not fun. And for me, I'm non-technical. Um, and so it just took me way more time than I needed to. And I was using other platforms. Like I was using click funnels for sales funnels. I was using learn dash with WordPress and uh, pipeline tools from pipe drive and all these things and duct taping it together all with Zapier. And, and I realized like, man, why hasn't, why hasn't anyone made WordPress easier? We all know that it helps your business grow better than any other, you know, any other infrastructure, but it's hard, it's complex, and, and it can take you months just to get it up and going. So instead, I created Drop Funnels to say, okay, we're going to give, there's no plugins needed, no, no themes, no tech, no code, period. You can have a site live in under 30 seconds, probably about like five or six seconds in reality. 
and to create un, you know, a, a large amount of subsites underneath for every project that you want to do, give great support, over deliver for people and give them the WordPress experience without the WordPress headache. So finally, uh, at least for me, I can launch a business in a day. I can launch a sales funnel in a day and do it myself without any designers or programmers or, or any of that, just to make it much simpler. Um, so yeah, WordPress is, is very, very, very advanced, which is why most people are a little bit uh, shy about it, a little concerned. Mm -hmm. And so with draw funnels every single day, we are eliminating complexity and removing constraints to make it easier and faster to build anything you can imagine. So is it kind of like click funnels without the drawbacks of click funnels? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and by the way, we obviously have a, a synonymous connection. Russell Brunson's a genius. And I think as a trainer, it's, it's incredible stuff. I, you know, I think the, the, the platform itself, and it's the reason why I left click funnels to build this is because of a lot of the issues that come with that, right? They have the psychology, but not the tech WordPress has the tech, but not the psychology. So bringing these things together is that kind of happy union. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the, the problem with ClickFunnels as it stands right now at the point of this recording is that the pages load super slow. The URL structure is based on like a redirect. So you can actually get your Facebook accounts shut down because it's against their terms. Um, there's no rankability at all. In fact, uh, you know, one ClickFunnels user uh, who who's a good friend of mine had one, she had one customer, just one customer who was really negative and, na and nasty, launched a WordPress site about her offer that she had had for, out for years and wrote one negative review on a single blog post on a WordPress installation and outranked her in, in less than a week. And so anytime someone Googled her program, they're, the first thing they're seeing is that one person is calling it a scam, right? Or one negative interaction. That's the power that is in the hands of anyone who's saying, I am willing to I, I want to wield that sword, right? And it's unfortunate for her, but you know, if if other platforms, it's not just ClickFunnels. There's a lot of sales funnel platforms out there. It's a, quite the crowded marketplace, but none of them help you to rank, right? Which means that you're getting no organic traffic. Anyone who's good, bad, or indifferent towards you can outrank you really, really, really quickly uh, with virtually no effort at all. And so, so for that, that's why we decided to build it on that infrastructure. Yeah, I've had a, I've never really used ClickFunnels. And it's so funny, I was deep in the Infusionsoft community for many years. And yeah. some people still have the t-shirt that Russell made was, you know, ClickFunnels, Infusionsoft. ClickFunnels Hearts Infusionsoft. Oh, wow. That was really, because he eventually came back and said and called it Confusionsoft. Right. Which is right. like the ante, right? Yes. Once he built it up, then he poo-pooed them, right? And people are like, come on, man. And um, <clears throat> it's just... Uh, there's very few companies that I just <clears throat> would outwardly bash, you know, mm. one is Salesforce. <laughs> I bash them only when they go after small business. Obviously they're the 800 pound gorilla in the big business space, mm. but it's, I've just seen so many small guys get gobbled up by Salesforce. You know, they try to use it because, you know, Tony Robbins uses Salesforce. So I'm going to use Salesforce and like, dude, you like you're selling, you know, toothbrushes for cats. I mean, or something. like, no, you don't need right. Salesforce right now. Right. Um, and, and then I, I got kind of, I went after click funnels a little bit here and there back in the day when they, when they pivoted, right. Like, come on, dude. Um, and it's, I know like it's everything, everything's good. Everything's bad. Right. It just depends on how you use it. But I just hate when people say this, this solves every problem. Like, no, it doesn't. There's no platform that solves every problem. Right. You know? So just tell me what you do solve. Tell me where you don't solve. And then, you know, we'll make a decision and, and go make things happen. But yeah. And, and for us, like my, my ethics are, even though I have an incentive to help people to win using our platform, I always say, use whatever tool helps you to win at your stage of your journey. And that's it, whether you're with me or with not. Um, it's like Miracle on 34th Street, kind of a eth ethics around here. It's like, use what's going to help you to win, uh, regardless of your size or whatever, pick the tools that are going to help you build a house of the size that you want. Um, and so, yeah, for, for us, we are really clear on what we do well. And we're really clear that there are some things that we don't do. We are not going to, we're not an active campaign. We're not a MailChimp. We're not focusing on mass email sending. We do have a tool called Drop Responder that you can plug into your Gmail that will automatically send from your Gmail account. It helps you to get like 90% open rates. 
but we're not a mass email autoresponder system. We're not an affiliate marketing platform. I mean, there's a lot of systems trying to be all things to all men. And for me, I'd say, look, we are the best marketing platform, period. You can bolt on or add, or, you know, there's direct integrations with thousands of softwares, um, you know, even uh, if you include through Zapier and whatnot. So we use drop funnels to sell drop funnels at the same, at the same point, but from a, a marketing infrastructure only, like we're not, we're not going to be like a, a sales force. We're not going to try to be a hub spot. We're not being those things. We're saying we serve typically it's a solo entrepreneur or an entrepreneur of a small team who doesn't want the tech headaches. They want to save a ton of money by deleting other subscriptions and wants our help to help them eliminate the overwhelm, especially mm-hmm. the technical overwhelm. So how did you make the shift from employee to founder developer? Such a great question. Um, I, well, I, I have what I call my 21 jobs. Uh, I'm 34 now and drop funnels has been around about two and a half, almost two and a half years. Um, and I always, I always find that uh, it's interesting. Any business who can make it beyond two years, if you can survive your sophomore year, you're, you're probably pretty good. So we survived, we survived it. There's challenges every single day. Uh, but I have what I call my 21 jobs. I was a sham wow salesman, worked for a, for a magician. I had a newspaper route. I've worked in a TV station. I was actually a filmmaker and I got to win some cool awards, which was neat. And all that kind of culminated into, into what I helped, what I essentially created today. And it was one day, I, I mean, I was obviously using all these other tools and I was like, man, there has to be a better way to do this. And there just wasn't there literally, it didn't exist. Um, so I, I scraped up about 20 grand or so of my own cash. I bootstrapped. We've never taken a penny of equity, no VC, even though they're throwing seven figure offers our way, we've never taken a single offer. Um, so we bootstrapped from day one. And so I'm really proud about that. Um, and we employ between 15 and 20 people or so, depending on, on seasonality. Um, and I just figured like, why can't we just build what we actually want to have? And that solves my own problem. So, so now, even if I wasn't the owner of DF, I would use DF all the time because it fulfills every need that I have when it comes to even a, for a new solo project. I just launched a, another business recently and we had the full website sales funnel, the whole sales pipeline built in a day instead of in months, which is, you know, really what it would have taken. So, so for me, it was literally solving my own problem and much, much less about solving other people's problems. It just happened to also solve, I guess, other people's problems. Yeah. I'm, I'm constantly kicked in the gut, you know, working with a client right now, they, they have HubSpot and have a growing sales team and, Oh, you want to do round Robin lead assignment. It's like a piece of cake with Infusionsoft. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's an upsell. You got to do the sales pro add-on. Mm. All right, so we get that. Well, now he has seasonal salespeople. So he doesn't want an equal distribution of leads. Three guys he wants in the regular rotation, two guys he wants them to get half the leads. Mm. Same thing, Infusionsoft, it's a percentage. Just, uh, no, cannot do it at all in HubSpot. You know, HubSpot will send an internal SMS notice when a lead comes in or whatever you want to do. Can't do an outbound SMS to the customer. Infusionsoft slash keep will send an outbound, but not an inbound. <laughs> so I, every time you look up, like, whoa, whoa, wait, oh, damn it. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. I, it's probably a side note that some people will drown out, but I think it's, I think it's a really critical component of things. And actually where we're switching a lot of our gears is when I sign up for software, I just want the dang software. I want it to work. I want it to do what it claims. And I'd love to have great support, right? Those are my, my three primary components. And as we actually moved into, I, I think our, our next phase of what drop funnels is, is um, you know, currently we have plans at 49, 97, and then there's like a 299 ultimate plan is that, you know, we're, we're really switching to more of a, Hey, look, if you want to go do this on your own, you're going to get every feature completely unlocked on our starter plan at a total base. You get everything we have. There's no features that you can unlock on a higher tier plan. The only difference between the plans would be how much access you want to us to actually build stuff for you. And so I'm moving a, a bit from, instead of being a software as a service to being a, ser- a service as a software, a SaaS platform, as it were, where generally a lot of busy entrepreneurs are people who aren't 
great at design or maybe they're not very technical or they just don't want to be in any marketing platform period, you know, where we can actually do the heavy lifting because we're, we're really good at it and we're really fast. So for us, we can make it pretty irresistible to build, um, you know, some infrastructures. One of the best that I, that I see for a lot of people is having what I call an authority funnel. Essentially what this means is it's a website, so to speak. It's a website that can rank in Google, makes you shine, build your reputation, makes you look great as an expert in whatever it is that you're doing. But there's only one primary call to action. We eliminate all the big menus and all the distractions and social links and all the things that can pull people out of your experience. And instead, only push them to the primary call to action, which would be to either book a call with you or to buy your initial product and to keep to keep things linear and focused and simple. I'll tell you, I've got three kids, six, three, and one, and nothing in the world would make me happier than to spend more time with them than fighting over my tech infrastructure. Like, not, I don't want to get to 80 years old and regret the fact that I was I don't know, somehow in the hustle culture that you have to work 25 hour days and sacrifice so much right now to, to finally live when you're old and decrepit. So for me, every, every, I'll see things every, even today I'm, I'm in drop funnels building something. It's like, man, I wish I could do this. And I'll go tell the dev team, guys, go build this. And they'll have it done that week. Uh, just new ways to improve processes and speed things up. And we're always iterating in that way. Um, so, so for me, I, I think we need to be building our businesses to empower building the life that we want and not the other way around. You know, we don't need to be putting every possible sacrifice of our, of our personal lives, our happiness and our longevity, our health, you know, to sacrifice for business growth where, you know, frankly, for most people, you don't need a hundred million dollars to be happy and fulfilled and to live the life of your dreams. You just don't. Tony Robbins talks about that, uh, you know, in his, uh, in his book, I forget which one it is, but he talks about that, that comparison about how much we think we need versus how much we actually need. And, and my, my posit is why don't we just architect the life we actually want and then have the business support that for us. Mm -hmm. Why not build that other way? I mean, the hustle culture will say, no, forget that. I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of stuff. And I'm like, dude, the 20, 30, 40s in your life are, yeah. are the pivotal times, time to spend with your kids and to enjoy social life and to travel and enjoy yourself. And, and even if that means, you know, less time clicking around and pushing buttons, then I say, so be it. I thought I needed a custom Lamborghini limousine before I knew that I've made it. <laughs> no with seven watches on my arm worth like $12 million. Yep. Gold right? chains, get yourself a grill. I don't know. So, but from a software standpoint, how do you know what to put in and what to leave out? Because can't it get too complex or too expensive to develop and maintain, you know, then you got to raise mm -hmm. prices because you got so many features and you got a damn army supporting it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, you know, we've not substantially expanded the feature set to be, to do, to make us something that we're not. Um, when anyone, if anyone were to log in, there's a free trial. So anyone can, can uh, check it out. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do, right? So when, whenever there, there's maximum possibility or opportunity for you, sometimes that can create overwhelm. And I just say, guys, just keep it, keep it really simple. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Well, I want clients for my marketing agency. I charge five grand a month, and this is the niche that I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on. Well, you probably don't need to build a big fancy blog and spend years building that up. You don't need to do a huge YouTube channel. You probably don't need really expansive. It's like, what is the path of least resistance, right? What's the step before you get a new client at five grand a month? Well, that's a conversation. It's a one-on-one -on -one call. What happens before that? Well, I need to invite them to this call. So simple. I just need a page that has that embed from Calendly or schedule once that says, Hey, book a call with me before that. How do we get them to look at that? Well, maybe there's a training where we can explain our unique processes to help that niche to achieve a particular result. Great. So that's a video, a VSL or video sales letter. It's literally a page with a video module on it and you host it in Vimeo and, or, or just put it right into the platform and just drop it in. 
And then how do I get people to that? Well, maybe you need an opt-in page. Very simple. It takes literally five minutes to build. Drag out your opt-in form. You can connect an autoresponder if you want to, or you can just send them to a pipeline um, to automatically converse back and forth with them. So it's like, that's what we need. Can we get more fancy than that? Yeah, of course. You can really expound and make things really big and and fancy, but you got to think, what am I trying to achieve and what's the path of least resistance to get there? You think entrepreneurs, though, are, they're lied to, you know, they're, they're misled because it's even making easy software, right? So you're, you're at least making it possible. Uh, but still, the whole messaging, I talk, I have a, a video tutorial I give on my website called Process Before Login. Right. Cause everything you just said, like, I, I agree. Like, what is your process? What, where are you walking people through? Um, most people, most entrepreneurs, like they don't have a process. Like I say, go, go watch how it's made, right? Like a paperclip, you know, how freaking complex it is to make a paperclip. <laughs> you know, we throw, you won't bend over to pick one off the ground, right? You, you just throw them away when you get them, but it's mm-hmm. like the steel, the aluminum, whatever the, the metal ingot it's heated it's a thing pulls it at the right you know torque and pounds per square inch and then it's run and the, the diameter that it's bent and chopped and then like that's a detailed process for something we just throw away but entrepreneurs don't think like that they don't know what's possible and but on top of that it's like what do i say at each step of the way you know, I'm training some guys right now. They're doing $15 million. They doubled last year. They doubled the year before that. They're going to double this year. Um, simplest sales dudes. I mean, they're just tripping over money. But if somebody if somebody doesn't just hand them money, it's like it's it's almost that they, they lose the sale because they like the product is just good, right time, right place. And these guys are just making money. Um. But when I ask them, what do you say? Why do you say that? Why are you unique? Why should I pick you over your competition? They literally can't answer that question. Like I was on site with them last week. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we've got to document that. Like why? And then, then the good things come out. Like the owners know, salespeople don't. So, I mean, this whole entrepreneur thing, it's harder than people make it out to be, isn't it? Yeah, I, I do think that there is, a, there's a lot of gurus or self-proclaimed experts shouting to the rooftops their particular modality or methodology to make things easier, faster, cheaper, or more successful. And I, I think especially with social media, it makes us feel inadequate in many cases. And most people end up doing nothing because they're getting so many conflicting messages. And so they end up building, I think, really, really complex systems. Like when, when you mentioned the paperclip, there's nothing in that process that is unnecessary. And they're probably, except for maybe at the beginning, they're probably not testing things out continually to make it fancier, right? They're keeping things, keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, and I think we're always searching for more. I, get, I think it's a, as much a blessing as it is a curse for an entrepreneur. Um, but I, I think if we were to, if, if I were to tell you, hey, I if you do exactly this and your business will double this year, but it's going to go no more than that and no less than that, here's exactly what you need to do every day. Do this every day, every week, every quarter. This is how this is going to work. You can do that or you can go try to test a lot of things by staying consistent over that time with a very simple and repeatable process. The same way that you're making a paperclip, it doesn't change. You're, you're putting something, you're creating an input. It goes through a process what comes out the other side. And I mean, yeah, if they could change the molecules of the metal that they're, you know, forming in there to, to sharpen it and to, to make it even better or faster, or whatever, they'll do that. Right. But if you have no process at all, I just think it's, it's critical to delineate what works for other people versus what you should be doing, what you should be focusing on mm-hmm. and forget everyone. Everyone else's business is not your business. How they're doing things means you know, probably the wins and the social posts of how much money people are making and all those things didn't come from like, Hey, we turn on this business and suddenly we're at 15 million. No, with that, with their client, they probably spent seven to 10 years dialing in a process, validating an offer and running it over time. 
and just improving slowly, right? So we're always, um, I think, generally shooting for all these moonshots where we need to like 5X our company in a year. That just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I mean, it's like crazy unicorns that do that. So I think it's expectations and reality. Like keep mm-hmm. things keep things simple, create for yourself a path where you can double your company every year. And that can be healthy. For some people, it's if I can increase my revenue 20% in a year while maintaining happiness, life balance, and my team is happy, that's a huge win and a huge accomplishment. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about scraping together 20 grand, uh, I mean, did you quit your job and go all in or was that 20 grand for development and you kept your job to keep food on the table while that was being spun up? Yeah, I ended up, I, I had a, a full-time chief marketing officer position for kind of a corporate company. Um, and that's when I realized I wanted to break out on my own, you know, and I was earning about 15 grand a month, plus a little bit of a, of, of a profit share at that time. And so I had stocked up enough to make, to make that happen, to at least build it. And then I, I pushed, man, I'll tell you at the beginning, and I think it's the best way to get any new offer off the ground is to go to an existing audience who's currently using something else, and maybe they aren't happy with it, or an audience who's really interested in this particular topic and say, hey, come in and join me as a beta user in this platform. And, and if you do, I'm going to grandfather you in for life and I'm going to outpour massive value to you. In fact, uh, what is currently now our 299 plan was originally launched as a $37 offer that I had my first maybe hundred users come through um, before the platform was even built. It said, guys, this is what I'm building. If you want in on it, here's a checkout link. You can join in and I'll never raise your rates ever. And I've honored that to this day. So there are people still paying 37 bucks versus 300. It'll probably go even higher as inflation and product cost and all that. So I think that's the best way to go out and validate that. But it gave me the initial seed capital just from users voting for this idea, voting for me to build this. And, um, and between that and my, you know, full-time job, I, I'll tell you, Wes, I live really cheap. People would be shocked how little I spend on things. I don't need nice things. I've got a Tesla. That was my goal and I'm fine with it. And outside of a little bit of travel and experiences, I just pretty much reinvest everything that I make into either passive vehicles or back into the business. Um, and I also like to hold on to cash. I like to, uh, the idea of building a treasury because it does two things. It protects you from market downside. Like I am not panicking right now in this current uh, recession that's now taking place and will probably be for the next year. And anytime a new opportunity comes, I've got dry powder ready to go. Right. So, so for me, I think being financially sound is, is pretty critical. Anytime you're going to be launching something like this. I also don't necessarily recommend anyone start a subscription based uh, software platform. It's probably the hardest thing in the world to build very, very, it's really hard, right? It's really, really hard. And every day you're always thinking about how do I solve the challenges that, that we're facing? Um, Whereas, you know, you could sell, we, we could very easily just delete everything that we're doing and go forward with building a coaching program or a consultancy or whatever, and probably grow faster, but just it's separate from the goals that, you know, that we have. And I actually kind of love the challenge. Interesting. I've had a lot of SaaS founders on, um, you know, they, they do say it's hard, but I guess the beauty is the run rate, right? And the like me being an affiliate, you know, being a certified partner, basically I'm, I'm an affiliate that knows how to use the software I sell. Right. But the residual income I make from those has been life-changing. Yeah. MRR is like God's gift to humanity. Yeah. I mean, and that's what you're creating, right? And that's why people bite the bullet because build it once, get paid for a long time. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could stop right now and we would just coast Yeah, for a long time. I mean, obviously yeah. we wouldn't do that, but. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of it. Versus having to, as they as sales guys say, hunt and kill every month, mm-hmm. right? In order to eat, you have to kill. Mm-hmm. In our case, we're saying, hey, let's just get mass user adoption. Right. So, so what are you seeing that's working, like going to market? Because you're, you're two and a half years old. So, I mean, you basically started as COVID launched, right? <laughs> right before the shutdown. Yeah. So, hmm, let me think about this. 
Did you ever visit China? Drop I, funnels. I didn't bring it so, with. No, I, I never went, and I didn't bring it with me. Drop funnels a... <laughs> launches, and then COVID launched. Okay, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to research that later. But anyway, um, so you launched just before. Now, when I say launch, does that mean like? Were you taking beta customers two and a half years ago, or was that when like the first line of code started getting created two and a half years ago? Yeah, so it was in September of 2019 is when I first started developing the platform and taking on some beta users um, and saying like, hey, if you want to jump in early, here's the offer, which I think, by the way, is the secret to growing a business is the amount of makers of, of offers that you make in the marketplace. If you make zero offers, you make zero money. If you make a lot of offers, you make money, period. It's how it works. So at, especially at the beginning, I was saying, Hey guys, jump into this and I'm going to make sure that it's worth your while. So what are you offering? But was it like before it was even sold or, or coded, you know, were you saying, Hey, in 30 days, I'll have something you can use or you know, what were you selling day one? Right. I was actually just building what I initially gave was some done for you funnels, some sales funnels they could import or whatever. And obviously we're on other platforms at, at that time, but it's just to kind of like build some value initially while I was getting this going. And then I'd, I'd bring them in with, I did some coaching calls. We had a nice community kind of built up of, you know, a couple hundred people and then ended up transitioning that and saying, Hey guys, the platform's already come in, start using it give us feedback. And All right. We'll, we'll just sharpen it. Every but let's day. back up. Cause those hundred, a couple hundred people is unique. Not everybody has even a hundred people. So what, right. You know, I like to unwind this and go, okay, where did you really start? So mm -hmm. were you building like WordPress funnels or templates or things that you were, that you gave? Yeah. As I mentioned, I mean, I was on, I was using click funnels for the sales funnel side and WordPress okay. for the sites and learn dash and courses and all that. And the previous company that I worked with was kind of a marketing company anyway. Um, and since then it's, they've gone on to do their own, their own thing, but I was able to build up an audience of people where I was continually almost every day, um, just building up an audience, building up a list of people, both with an email list, but also inside of a, a Facebook group. It's the exact same group that we have today on, on Facebook. And so we've grown from a couple hundred to 6,500 members or so um, over the years. And and so building up the first, I always tell people it's as hard to go from zero to one as it is to go from one to 10. It is that hard. So when you're first building up your audience and your list, what I always suggest to people is help them to achieve something that they're already wanting to do. You don't need to try to convince them of something new or get them into a new business or whatever. What, what is something that you're really excited about? Maybe you've had your own transformation or you've helped other people with the transformation people only buy their way out of pain. It's the only reason anyone spends money on anything, even status. All of that has, has to do with escaping a pain of feeling inadequate. So, so with that, what is the current pain in the marketplace? So you can solve that problem for a few people, even if it's for free or for super cheap and say, hey, I'm going to support you through helping you get to this spot. They're going to start to see you as the solution much more than any other softwares or platforms or, or, or industries. So that first hundred people that you'll grow it can take a lot of, it can take time. It can take effort. Um, but people start to talk. They start to, there, there tends to be murmurs in the industry and they start to say, Hey, he's helping me do this thing over here. Let's come, come check this out. Right. Um, launching an affiliate program helps with that too. I think, I think it's only in the right time for most companies that they should launch an affiliate program. Um, cause it's a whole additional business, right. Is to manage affiliates. Um, but in large part, I think building up an audience from zero to one is the first hurdle. And I, it's Kevin, I forget the name, it's Kevin something, but he talks about that concept of a thousand true fans, right? So if you can build up a list of a thousand people, you'll never go hungry ever again. Is that the uh, meet Kevin guy? Yes. Yeah. I forget his last name, but yeah, my, my son introduced, my son's in real estate. He introduced me to him a year or so ago. That, that guy is, he actually just ran for governor, I think, <laughs> of well, maybe, California. Maybe his, it, maybe his thousand true fans would help him there. Yeah. 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 Answer. Meet Kevin. What's his name? I mean, I mean, if you just type in meet Kevin, Kevin path, P A F F path, rat, ah. mm. just do meet Kevin. It's easier to say type. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's, you know, my name is Jordan Metric, but I go by Jordo and it's funny how no one can spell Jordan, believe it or not, but everyone can spell Jordo. So <laughs> that kind of name stickiness. 
So, so can you beat up Jocko? Jocko would eat me alive with probably a fork and a knife. All right, I'm just confirming. You know, I mean, yeah, you might yeah. be like a secret badass. I don't know. I like. I might be faster, but he, if he got a hold of me, I'd be done. <laughs> He's strong, dude. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, Jocko stuff. So yes, yeah, so that's interesting. So um, you had a little bit of a base, and you know, I, I was talking about that the other day in one of my posts. It's like always be building an audience. I mean, even when you're on your, if you're working for someone else, um, you can yes. be known, you know, a good friend of mine, I, man, I used to work with him 15, 12, 15 years ago in, in tech, he's still at the same company. Uh, but it's a very technical sale and he just become the expert and has all types of views on YouTube and stuff. And then when COVID hit, I was telling him years ago, dude, you could easily go on your own, just be a trainer. And uh, but COVID hit, and like he stopped traveling because he was in such demand with his company, traveling internationally, always training, always speaking. And he he didn't get on a flight for two years, and just grew exponentially. Uh, he's still an employee, right? But you know he's getting raises, and so he could go out on his own at any time now because he's just so well known from making great content and being visible, you know, even, you know, on video, but um, it's funny how people, they shy away from it. I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've worked with people helping them put a script together and uh, they don't want to do it. I just, just turn the camera on. I've done, I'm an expert on this for so long. And as soon as that red light is on the camera, mm -hmm. uh, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> I'm like, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> Got it. it takes a while to get comfortable, like going live, right? And and yeah, being willing I, to be recorded. <laughs> I think you got to be willing to only show up for one person at a time. It's like people are trying to build these multi-million digit, uh, you know, audiences, like these huge, massive social followings. And and one of my favorite stories is is this girl who built multiple millions on Instagram, then launched like a t-shirt brand and couldn't sell like a single shirt for twenty bucks. So it's like the size of the audience doesn't matter. The intent of the audience and working with you does. So, you know, even if you're not comfortable on video, there's other ways to communicate with people. You know, Zoom, whether it's like you know, build your own Slack channel, build your own Facebook group. But, but generally the, the goal, the focus, especially, especially if you're working for another brand or another company and you're trying to get out on your own, the number one goal you should have if you truly want to go out on your own on one day, in, in one, uh, one day would be to start to pull some of that audience, the people who really like you and like following you and find value from what you're providing to them and pull them into your own infrastructure, right? Um, so it's, it's kind of like ecosystem jacking, so to speak. It's like if, uh, if news is happening, there's a news jacker type of uh, strategy where it's like, hey, you can really put out content based on what's happening in current events and it's gonna draw people to you based on the current momentum, right? So same thing that if you, especially if there's, if you're not competing, I think there's an ethical dilemma with maybe launching the same thing and competing with a, a company who served you very well, right? But if you're going to go, say you work for a software company, then you go launch your own sales organization or something. A lot of people will stay on that platform and follow you over to help to increase their sales. So I think, you know, when it's done properly and you can start to build that list and build that audience, you can launch yourself at any time. Yep. But is it safe to say when you were working that company and building that audience, you know, were you doing it with the intention or the knowledge that one day you would go out on your own or was it just a natural progression and, and that was just the best thing to do in your job for your company at that time? Yeah, for me, I had no intentions of, of doing my own thing by any stretch. Actually, the company ended up taking pretty, pretty much a hard pivot in a completely different direction. And I jumped out. Um, and so no, no intention. And, in, but sometimes it's like when that opportunity presents itself, it gives you, give the, it gives you that chance to say, okay, now's the time to dive in. Right. And like my dad's a pastor, my mom's a teacher. We did not come from wealth. I like to say that the silver spoon we ate from came from goodwill, right? Five of us kids, seven in the family. Um, and so, you know, there was no, no one's entrepreneurial in my current or extended family. No one's entrepreneur. I'm the only one. And so 
it, it wasn't instilled in me. It wasn't encouraged necessarily. It, it, it was like the traditional approach was really the way to go, but I knew there had to be something inside. There was something inside of me that wanted something greater. And so when that opportunity came and, and the company decided to go another direction and I said, okay, now's the time to go. Of course, it's scary. Of course, it's difficult. Um, but there's, I, I don't think that there are any worse problems. There's only different problems. You're only going to suffer with different things. Every stretch of your business is going to be different things. Look at Coinbase right now. They just laid off like today, 1800 employees or something. I mean, it was like 18% of their workforce or whatever it was. Um, they, they don't have better or worse problems. They just have different problems, right? If you're starting to get a new offer off the ground, it's like, all right, what do I sell? How do I price it? Who's going to buy this? How does it help them? How do I collect testimonials and reviews? How do I spin that up and get new traffic after the warm list is exhausted? It's like, they're all just different problems in different situations. And, and so you have to embrace that challenge as, as Jocko says, like that extreme ownership when you dive into that. And I, right now I'll tell you, Wes, I'm unemployable. No one can employ me. I'd be the worst possible employee or I'd make their company skyrocket in, in value just because of the things that I've learned. Um, but yeah, I, for me, once you kind of go entrepreneurial, there's no going back. It, it, it doesn't make financial sense. doesn't make freedom sense by any stretch. So when someone does it, just know it's, in my opinion, it's kind of a lifelong commitment to that. Look, let's be honest. I had to fire you. You went in the company kitchen. You kept eating bites of my cake. You know what I mean? Like, dude, eat the whole thing. All right. And then throw away the evidence. You know, I had to fire you. <laughs> if you're going to be unethical, do it well. I don't know. Golly, yes. And you stole all the paper clips, man. Come on. Those are, those are expensive paper clips. Yeah. Paper clips. Oh man. Good stuff. So we mentioned the name dropfunnels.com. Super simple. Um, uses WordPress AI to give you the conversion trifecta. Lightning fast sales funnels, consistent organic traffic, the perfect customer journey. Dude, this is good stuff. You may like make me, you might make me dip my toe back in the water of WordPress. You know, I, I, I can tell you for, for me, and of course I'm biased. So everyone take it with a grain of salt. I am super turned off by old school, traditional WordPress. It's just hard. It's technical. There's it's mm -hmm. no cheaper, right? It's actually more expensive when you had plugins, themes, hosting, mm -hmm. all these things. It's kind of the illusion of it being super effective and, and mm -hmm. expensive. So for me, I, I'll never go back. Even if I end up exiting drop funnels, I'll still use drop funnels as a, uh, <laughs> as a user because it can, it helps me to build anything I can imagine. Like whether it's a digital course or product or high ticket, low ticket, recurring, you know, pipelines, or if I've got, you know, I want to build up a huge blog. One thing I've wanted to do just would be a time to do it would be to, to start off an affiliate blog, um, maybe around like kind of like the points guy, which I'm pretty sure they're on WordPress as well, but they just built up a huge affiliate network of promoting credit card offers and travel offers and all that stuff. And they're a behemoth. I, I I don't recall what they're worth, but incredible how just one WordPress blog started years ago, reviewing credit card points and airline miles and all of that kind of stuff in building up that audience and building that rankability um, has created a probably an over a hundred million dollar empire, right? From just a couple of years, which is shocking and amazing, impossible for anyone who wants to make it happen. Yeah. Very cool, man. Well, before we hit record, you mentioned you come to Murrieta. I didn't know anybody knew where Murrieta was. So since you know where it is, then you got to give me a shout when you come down. I, 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 I might uh, take you up on that. I love Murrieta, Temecula, the whole San Diego area is beautiful. And uh, yeah, huge, huge love for, for that area of the country for sure. And your weather's great, which helps. Can't complain. It was 61 this morning. I was in I was in Fort Worth Sunday night. Met a buddy of mine at six p.m. It was hundred and six. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, they, they Texas doesn't have the taxes that you do, but they definitely have the heat. That's oh sure. my gosh! I mean, I you know I spent junior high and high school there, and and then five years in Austin, a year in Texas A and I mean, I'm used to the heat. Well, I used to be used to the heat. Good grief! It's just. Whoa, most people baby. don't move away from Murrieta. Like they're, what, what's that? Most people don't move away from Murrieta. Well, like, I try to explain to people we're in a unique little pocket, right? This is a good area surrounded by a bunch of idiots. Uh, <laughs> so, 
So it's all right. But as soon as I go more than a few minutes outside of my bubble, it's like, oh, crap, I'm in California. But otherwise, I work from home. Jiu-Jitsu is 10 minutes away. My church is one mile away. Okay. I'm, it's a good I'm life. life. <laughs> it's a good life. Just keep me right here. Stay yep, away. Church, Nobody's going to get hurt. I could walk. I could walk to my church and my gym's just two, two, you know, two or three miles down the road. I'm, I'm all about that. Like proximity, closeness and go travel whenever you want. Joy of entrepreneurship. That's right. <laughs> all right. Jordo drop funnels, guru marketing for the elite. Thanks for coming on the show, man. It's been great. My pleasure. Thank you Wes, for the time. All right, man. Have a good day. Elite marketing. Amen. Or marketing for the elite both work um but i love what he's talking about right he's duct taping things together and we've all done that uh, and it's within your power especially in today's modern age to create your own stuff so if, if things aren't the way that you like you know i always tell people it's easy to bitch and moan and complain it's harder to do something about it I told this guy in, in our hoa community about i don't know a few weeks ago he never got back to me but he's always complaining and, uh, you know, I learned in the military, if you bring up a complaint, come with three recommended courses of action to fix it. You know, and I got on the guy and uh, so like, oh, you got a problem with me? He messaged me privately. I'm like, I don't have a problem with you. I'm just being honest. You know, you're up here alarming people with these crazy ass posts of yours about security and whatever, but you have no recommendation. So fix the things you have problems with. And look, if, if you have an issue with something, ask around. You're probably not alone. And when you find folks having the same problems, you know, ask them, hey, how interested would you be in solving that? Would you invest a few bucks if I can make that pain go away? Uh, and people will always say things, right? Money is what counts. That's why I don't do focus groups and surveys and whatever. People say, oh, yeah, I'll do that. That's great. But when it comes time to put money down, different story. So get some feedback. Get some, um, some input from folks. Go launch a beta version. Bring them in the fold. Make them pay even a little bit. That's how you'll get their attention. That's how you get true feedback. That's how you can launch that MVP, that minimum viable product, and then grow from there. Okay? So, like he says, use whatever tool can help you win at whatever stage you are in your journey. I'm working with people all the time looking at technology, and they think they want HubSpot because it's big and fast and glorious and a public company and blah, blah, blah. But... Most, if they want all the fancy features, you're going to spend twelve to fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars a month, and still be missing a few things. So it's a hard conversation, right? So I'm like, let's you know, let's talk. Maybe because it, it does it does suck to have to upgrade and move things to another platform, okay? But I've done it. I've helped a lot of people move very big businesses, multi million dollar businesses, from Infusionsoft or Keep over to. HubSpot and vice versa. So it does suck. But if you're worried about the amount of money you're spending on tools and, and your overhead, you've got to reduce that until you're comfortable. Oh, but Wes, aren't you the sales inspiration? I just go sell some stuff. I can just sell my way out of it. Yes, that is true. But do you have the tools in place that you need to sell your way out of it? Okay. If it's because it's not how much you sell, it's how much you keep. All right. So if you can lower your expenses a thousand dollars a month, that, that'd be like landing, you know, one or two new clients every month. So uh, there's some big benefits to keeping your costs under control. All right. So you may have to pick a smaller tool, use the crap out of it and grow and scale till you need the next the next tool and just just like growing a family right we've had to move you know we had a two-bedroom apartment then we rented a three-bedroom house then a bigger three-bedroom house then we bought our first house then we bought a bigger house then we moved to california we rented a big house for six years five years and we moved into this house rented this for one more year then bought it so as our family grew and, and opportunities came and went we moved so it's, it's life, it's growth, okay? So get the tools that you'll use and can afford and have a great ROI 
then grow into the next one. Okay, if you need help with that, hit me up. As always, invest in yourself. MakeEverySale.com. The price actually was lowered, but sell more of everything has gone up, but it's still super affordable. Come join us. You'll be glad you did. Now go sell something. <laughs>